Well, hello. Welcome to Josh's Garage. Today I'm going to show you how to install five of these puppies on one of these puppies. That's a 500 watt Renogy Premium Solar Kit and I'm going to install it from start to finish from unboxing to boondocking. So hopefully today I can teach you something. Stay tuned. Okay, let's get started with unboxing. We have five monocrystalline 100 watt solar panels from Renergy. They come in three boxes, two boxes with two, one with one. And over here we have the brackets for mounting. We have 20 mounting plates for each. All the hardware to mount them, which I'll show you how to install. I've, uh, I've already just taken apart these bags, uh, so these are the um, self-tapping screws to, uh, to mount the plates to the roof itself. We have a 40 amp inline fuse on the way to the battery, a 15 amp waterproof fuse uh, that goes in the solar array on the positive side of the solar array right before it gets to the charge controller. Uh, it comes with two 20 foot cables. I think these are uh, 10 gauge, is that right? Yeah, I think they're 10 gauge cables with these MC4 connectors on them already, which are just wonderful. And then it comes with uh, uh, two 8 gauge tray cables or battery cables that go from the charge controller to the battery. And I'll show you how all this goes together. Uh, it also so comes with our 40 amp commander charge controller with the uh, MT50 tracer meter. So this is just the uh, remote display for this charge controller. Some controllers have them built right in. I kind of like this simple display that I can mount it wherever I'd like and I don't have this charge controller sitting out in in view within the coach. So that's the system. Let's get started putting it together. Okay, to install this mounting bracket uh, it has these little tabs. These go along the side and uh, it has the slotted section that you can line up with either uh, the more central or the more outboard location. I'm going to use the uh, more outside location for more stability. And then the sequence of uh, hardware is a 10 millimeter bolt with a flat washer, a fender washer, then um, another washer, then a lock washer like so, and yonder nut like that. So we're going to go through uh, like so and I'm going to place the bolt up from the inside, place the flat washer and the lock washer and then tighten the under nut then with my uh, 10 millimeter wrench and my 10 millimeter socket I'll just tighten these down. Voila! One down, 19 to go. just explain how everything's going to be connected and give you a tour of the whole system. So we have the motorhome itself. So it's represented by this box and some nice tires like so. Okay? Uh, now we're going to put the solar panels on top and I'm just going to draw them. They're going to go right about from here to here uh, and there's going to be five of them. So I'll just I'll put them up as if they're standing up here. One, two, three, four, five, like so. And uh, each solar panel is going to be wired in series. What that means is uh, we've got positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative of each. And they're going to be wired positive or negative to one to positive of the next, like so. All in a little daisy chain. And then I'll take the positive from the first one and the negative of the last one and we're going to wire it through that port which is actually kind of back here. Um, and we'll wire both of those through. Those wires come up all the way to the front 
cabinet uh, where you'll see in a little bit where uh, we'll put the, uh, the controller and the fuses and the switches up here. And from that spot, those are wired down to this battery bay down here where I have uh, six six volt batteries. Uh, so there are six 300 amp six volt batteries. And I won't get into the battery wiring, but they're wired in three banks of 12 volts each to create about 900 amp hours. So we will be wiring uh, to the positive um, from the controller and then to the negative uh, also from the controller. Actually there's a negative block in this battery bank. So I'll show you what that looks like uh, at the end. But that's the overview of what we're doing. Now let's get started with it. Up on the roof. Here we are. So I put one panel up here. This is a Tiffin Phaeton and I've ordered it with the uh, solar panel pre-wire which they wire to this dome-shaped uh, outlet port. We'll just call it that on the roof, whatever the technical name for this is. Um, which I'll fill with lap sealant and seal off. And then I've decided to place all five panels in a row along the driver's side. And I'm doing that, I know I could put them on both sides and maybe get more optimal sun at different parts of the day. But if I put them all on one side, with this side being, you know, maybe three or four or five percent raked for, for water runoff, um, then I am able to sort of strategically place the rig with the driver's side facing south to get a little bit more optimal placement and uh, efficiency out of these panels. There's something I need to tell you and I'm a little nervous about it and I'm hoping that you won't make fun of me but I'm wearing coveralls now uh, because I'm gonna get on this roof and I'm gonna have to put down this lap sealant and it's gonna get messy and uh, I just don't want to mess up my other clothes so. Now that I have all the panels where I want them, I have them lined up four, one, four in front of this port and one behind the port. All five wouldn't fit in a nice row in front of the port. So I'm wiring these in series. I'll wire it up at the end to make sure um, I'm doing it in the right sequence. But I'm going to show you how to mount these now. So to mount them, what you'll need are the mounting self-tapping screws, eight millimeter socket on an impact, or you can do them by hand if you like. Um, good old lap sealant. This is the self-leveling kind. There are two kinds I've found because I bought the wrong one before. Self-leveling and non-self-leveling. The self-leveling just kind of melts down over whatever you put it on to create a nice seal, so I prefer this. But when you're putting this on, you need a lot of these because it's messy. All right, so let's show you how to mount one piece and then I'll go through and do the rest. First thing I do is I choose which hole I'm going to mount to. I don't use both of these because then that would make uh, eight holes per panel. And I, I just feel like one, one per bracket, one screw per bracket is adequate to hold these down. So I'm gonna, for the most part, I'll just uh, use the outermost hole. And I'm just gonna put a little dab of this uh, lap sealant underneath. Um, just a little dab to seal the hole, like so. And then I will uh, run the screw right down in there. Now these screws that come with the kit have this uh, rubber seal on them. That's great. It, it will definitely seal the top probably, but I'm not sure about it sealing the bottom side. That's why I put the lap sealant below. That's a little more than I wanted to, so not a great example. But um, then I just... Run it down till it's snug, and that's it. Uh, so you notice the sealant kind of went around the screw, it went down the thread, it's sealed underneath. Uh, this thing is not going to leak, pretty, pretty much. You could put more sealant on top, but it just makes a mess. So uh, I'm, I'm going to be happy with this, and I'll go through and do all of them. are my two front panels, left and right, 
top, bottom, and uh, now I need to figure out how to mount the controller, the fuse to the battery, the on-off switch from the solar panels, and then the uh, actual uh, remote control for the controller. Uh, so let me just start laying these out. So this is the panel. What's going to happen is I have uh, two sets of wires. These wires are coming in from the roof, the solar panels on the roof, and these wires are going out to the battery bank, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, so what's going to happen is, uh, let's start with the wires coming from the battery bank. So positive is coming through this fuse here, um, then out of this fuse here and through backside to the positive on the battery connection here. The negative is just going through to the negative on the battery connection on the controller. So that's got the controller wired to the batteries. Next, let's connect the solar wire. So, or the solar panels. So the solar panels are going first through this um, disconnect switch here that I have. <clears throat> just so that I can, I just, I know the, the um, controller will m meter the the power that's going to the batteries um, and it won't overcharge the batteries but just for whatever reason if I want to work on it or if I want to do something I want to be able to disconnect it without having to unscrew and pull out wire and having hot wire sitting around so uh, so the pan solar panel positive is going to this switch and then the the other side is coming back out going through here to the solar panel positive solar panel negative is just coming through this panel right to here. Then the last piece is this uh, <clears throat> tracer meter which you saw me plug in. Um, it's plugged in through the back. It is going to go through and connect to the communication port here on the, uh, the control module. Okay? Got it? Does that sound right? Well, we'll see. The finished product. Let's go look at the battery bay. And underneath here in the battery bay, we have those six six volt batteries, 300 amp hours each, that are tied to this fuse block here. So we have our solar connection down here at the bottom uh, on a 30 amp circuit here in the fuse block, which is kind of double fusing it. Um, and then the negative, the white cable, tied to the negative block here on the chassis. So. Connections down here are simple, one positive, one negative, and they feed this whole mountain of batteries. We're going to finish wiring uh, from the top of the panels down into the coach. So uh, we have the positive line coming off of our series of panels. We're going to plug in the 15 amp fuse uh, into that, and then we'll plug in the female end of the PB cable into that. Now we have our waterproof connections that we will run to our positive yellow cable as we've done before. So I'm going to use these heavy duty butt connectors like so. Exact. All right, and uh, then we have our negative cable, and we will connect negative to negative. I'm making a nice strong crimp. Very nice. Strong crimp. All right, we're connected. Now I'm just going to uh, feed the wires back in there. I'm going to use this uh, this uh, shrink wrap to uh, just seal all the wires and um, 
feed them in. I'm going to place some lap sealant on the top of this just to seal it off. Uh, to secure cables, uh, I prefer to use just a, a dab of lap sealant instead of using um, like another screw with a, a tie down. Just the, the fewest number of holes I can put in this roof, the better in my opinion. All right, so let's get busy doing that. Well, it's a relatively cloudy day here in Utah, and we're under a bit of a cloud here, but let's just see what this uh, set of panels is doing. So, if we look here, let me just turn on the light. If we look here, we've got 97.5 volts and 3.5 amps coming to the batteries from the panels, but you might say, well, that doesn't seem like enough. It should be much higher, right? The, each panel is... 5 amps. Well you have to remember to divide by 5 and actually a, a little bit more than 5 because that's producing more than 60 volts. Um, remember this charge controller is trying to convert everything to 12 volts and it's viewing those panels on the roof as one large 97.5 volt panel. So it's converting that all down to 12 volts to charge the batteries and therefore roughly giving the batteries about, mm, sorry, I know mean, you can't see well with this backlight, 23.1 amps, which is pretty good on a not so cloudy day. That's uh, 23 amps per hour. That's a lot of lights you can run and TVs you can watch. And that's about all we use. I hope this was helpful and worth your time and my time making the video. If you enjoyed this and want other videos like this, please subscribe below. And thanks for visiting Josh's Garage.